Please join me in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit ourselves to walk in your word. Your word living in us produces your life in this world. Lord, we recognize that your word is integrity itself, steadfast, sure, eternal, and we trust our lives to its provisions. Lord, you have sent your word forth in our hearts. Let it dwell in us richly in all wisdom. Lord, we meditate on it day and night so that we may diligently act on it. The incorruptible seed, the living word, the word of truth is abiding in our spirit today. That seed is growing mightily in us now, producing your nature and your life. It is our counsel, our shield, our buckler, our powerful weapon in battle. The word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. It makes our way plain before us. We do not stumble for our steps are ordered in the word. The Holy Spirit leads and guides us in all truth. He gives us understanding, discernment, and comprehension so we are preserved from the snares of the evil one. Lord, we delight ourselves in you and your word. Because of that, you put your desires within our hearts. Lord, we commit our way unto you and you bring it to pass. Lord, we are confident that you are at work in us now, both to will and to do of all your good pleasure. Lord, we exalt your word. We hold it in high esteem and we give it first place. Lord, let us make our schedule around your word. Let us make your word the final authority to settle all questions that confront us. Lord, we choose to agree with the word of God and we choose to disagree with any thoughts, conditions, or circumstances contrary to your word. We boldly and confidently say that our heart is fixed and established on the solid foundation, the living word of God. Lord, considering all these things, we lift up today's teaching and we lift up today's teacher that the instruction that is brought forth continues to edify us and fortify us in your word in all that we do. We ask all these things in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Psalm 100, a psalm of thanks. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with celebration. Come before him with shouts of joy. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his own pasture. Enter his gates with thanks. Enter his courtyards with praise. Thank him. Bless his name. Because the Lord is good. His loyal love lasts forever. His faithfulness lasts generation after generation. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Greetings. Um October the 3rd, 2021, starting of a new unit, unit two of this quarter. Uh, continuing to celebrate God, uh, only you, Psalm 100, as we look in this month of October at some psalms as we talk about what it means to celebrate God through these psalms. Uh, life provides us with many opportunities to praise and find delight in people and things. How do we decide what has more value and is more worthy of our praise? Psalm 100 highlights that God is the object of the earth's praise and joy. Uh, the goals for this lesson to understand why and how God is to be worshipped as found in Psalm 100. Uh, to appreciate that God is worthy to be praised and then to create a psalm of praise for the Lord. This psalm is simply titled a psalm of thanksgiving and it is the only psalm in the collective to bear this title, it speaks of an invitation to the whole earth to know and to worship God. It is jubilant and confident for the whole earth as it contemplates the glory of that earth when all of the people are submitted to the reign of God. Maybe a joy, make a joyful noise. That's what and why of giving praise, what to do to praise God in verses 1 through 2. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before 
the Lord's presence with singing. Unlike the several previous psalms, Psalm 100 does not begin with a declaration of God's sovereignty or character. It begins with a simple and direct exhortation or encouragement to all you lands to praise God with a joyful shout. Uh, this is a call to the nations uh, extending far beyond Israel's borders. A shout of joy. The original word signifies a glad shout, such as a loyal subjects give when their king appears among them. Our happy God should be worshipped by a happy people. A cheerful spirit is, is in keeping with God's nature, God's acts, and the gratitude which we should cherish for God's mercies. The joyful noise is equivalent in worship to the homage shout of fanfare to a king. The nation must recognize who the Lord is. The Lord is Yahweh, by whose grace and blessings God's people exist. Uh, so, the psalmist likely had in mind his service of worship uh, to our temple rituals, but the principle applies to any service directed to God. Those who serve the Lord should do it with gladness. The nations must recognize the Lord as to who the Lord is, that the Lord is Yahweh, and by whose grace and blessings God's people exist. The nations, too, are invited to sing hymns to the Lord and to worship the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. It is your privilege and duty to be happy in your religious worship. The religion of a true God is intended to remove human misery and to make humans happy. Those whom the religion of Christ has not made happy does not understand that religion or does not make a proper use of it. As for the true believer in Jesus, he or she serves his or her God because he or she loves to serve God. He or she assembles with the great congregation because it is his or her delight to worship the Most High. Come before the Lord's presence with singing. As in many places in the Psalms, praise is expressed in song. Singing is not the only way to praise God, but it is the chief way to praise God. Why to do it? God is our creator and shepherd. Know that the Lord is God. Uh, it is God who has made us and not we ourselves. We are not God's people. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Know that the Lord is God. The praise that comes to God from God's people and all lands should be mindful. We have many reasons to worship Yahweh, the covenant God of Israel. And the reasons begin with the recognition that God is God. To know is to have firm ground underfoot, the prerequisite of praise, and if this knowledge is ours by gift, indeed by command. It is God who has made us. The next reason to worship God is an appropriate is, is an appropriate recognition of God's word as creator. The idea that we could make ourselves uh, is observed or could make ourselves to worship ourselves, we should worship the one who has made us, God. The sense of God's proprietorship is the true basis of our consecration. We must realize God's rights over us before we can freely give God praise to God. Those rights are manifold in their sweet reasonableness, but amongst them all, this of the creation is the one of chief. God has a right to us because God has made us. Of course, if we do not need God as our creator, then we do not need to be thankful. Why should we? We got here by ourselves, thank you. We have no one but ourselves to thank. Under the new covenant, the believer has a second and greater reason for praise. He or she is a new creation in Jesus Christ. And not we ourselves. Therefore we owe God homage and service and God only and not other gods who did not make us. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. The third reason to worship God is because God has chosen a people. Originally the Jewish people then added the followers of Jesus Christ. And God cares for us as the sheep of God's pasture. The what and why of giving thanks. What to do, come to God's house with thanks and praise, enter into God's gates with thanksgiving, and into God's courts with praise. Be thankful to God and bless God's name. 
Now the psalmist pictures the people of God from all lands entering through the gates and into the courts of the temple, and God's people approach. We should do so with thanksgiving as we approach, recognizing how much God has done for us, and enter his gates with thanksgiving, publicly worship God, and when you come to the house of prayer, be thankful that you have a privilege. And when you enter God's courts, praise God for the permission to come in. It, teach, it teaches us that there is a special aspect of thanksgiving that involves the whole people of God together and not just the private prayers of individuals. Into God's courts with praise, thanks, and praise merge together as God's people are thankful and bless God's name. It is though the gates of the city, the court of the sanctuary, were suddenly thrown open and all lands are called to serve God, to know God is God, and to enter into relationship with God. Under the new covenant, not only are the gates and courts open, but even the way to the Holy of Holies is thrown open as we look in Hebrews 10, 19. For the Lord is good, God's mercy is everlasting, and God's truth endures to all generations. For the Lord is good. Thanks and praise are right in the recognition of God's goodness, and, and God is good in God's plans, good in God's grace, God is good in God's forgiveness, God is good in God's covenant, God is good in every aspect of God's being. For the Lord is good. The gods of the heathen were not good. They were selfish and capricious. You could never know what they might want to uh, turn against you and do you harm. Not as our God. The God of the Bible is said it always to be good. How glorious will be that day which shall behold the everlasting gates of heaven, lifting up their heads and disclosing to view those courts above and to which the children of the resurrection are to enter. There, with angels and archangels, to dwell and sing forevermore. Well, this is our lesson. I commend to you the challenges for the week found on the next slide. Only you, talking about God, Psalm 100. Blessings.